like to call this regular meeting of the Charlotte County Planning and Zoning to, to order. Uh, Secretary, please call the roll. Ken Chandler. Here. Paul Bigness. Here. Stephen Vieira. Here. Don McCormick. Here. Michael Graveson. Here. Uh, we are all here, and so that constitutes a quorum. Uh, the minutes for the March 11th meeting were circulated. Any corrections or additions? Would move their approval. Second. Have a motion and a second for the approval of the minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Uh, any announcements from the staff? Okay. Um, I'd like all of our four petitions today are quasi judicial, and I'd like the uh, attorney to make a brief statement on quasi judicial uh, petitions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> the standard for decision making for quasi judicial hearings is as follows. Only competent, substantial, sworn, factual evidence and expert opinions, if offered and accepted, may be properly considered by the board. All documentation presented to the board and county staff will be retained as part of the official records of the proceedings. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so therefore, anybody that is going to be speaking uh, for, against, or about these petitions uh, will need to rise and take an oath. And if you're in doubt, go ahead and take the oath. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Please say, I do. I do. Thank you. Okay, we'll start with our first petition then. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you said, this is quasi-judicial, so I need to ask the board's acceptance as an expert in planning. Uh, yes, uh, the board will accept that. and. and uh, We'll ask the applicant when they come forward to, to accept that also. Thank you, sir. This is PP 190201. It's a preliminary plat request. It's in the uh, northern area of Babcock. As you see, it's expanded to the north of existing development. The future land use designation is Babcock Mixed Use. The zoning designation is Babcock Overlay Zoning District. This is how it fits in with the existing developments. You see a significant expansion to the north. And this will be the result of the proposed changes. Lennar Homes LLC has requested preliminary plat approval for a residential subdivision to be named Babcock National, consisting of 116 single family lots the site is 459.79 acres, more or less, and is located south of Vermont Road, north of the border with Lee County, east of Babcock Ranch Road, and west of the border with Glades County, in Commission District 1. Babcock National will be developed immediately to the north of Babcock Ranch Community Phase 1B1, being owned by an entity other than Babcock Property Holdings, LLC, this application required the approval of the Independent Special District. The ISD issued their conditional approval on February 1st of this year. The applicant has also provided a utility availability letter from the ISD. All of the pertinent departments have reviewed, resulting in a total of three conditions. Therefore, Community Development recommends approval of petition PP190201 with the following three conditions. Number one, prior to final plat approval, the applicant must obtain a school concurrency availability determination letter from the Charlotte County School District indicating that sufficient capacity exists or has been accounted for through a binding and enforceable agreement at elementary, middle, and high school levels. Number two, Prior to final plat, the plat mylar must be amended to show the access easement granted by Babcock Property Holdings LLC, recorded in OR Book 4399, pages 856 through 871. And number three, prior to final plat, the plat mylar must be amended to show the name Michael L. Graveson in the signature block for the Chairman of the Planning and Zoning Board. Be happy to take your questions. Thank you. Any questions from the board for the staff? Not at this time. Okay. Uh, we'll have the presentation from the uh, applicant's representative. 
Good afternoon, Todd Rebel with Banks Engineering for the record. I'm here on behalf of Lennar Homes LLC. And uh, we, I have been sworn and we do accept staff's uh, input as we, uh, expert testimony. And we have received all three conditions. We accept those. And I am here with uh, Barry from Lennar Homes. If you have any questions, be more than happy to answer them. Okay. Any questions for the applicant for this, from the board? No. no. Okay. We'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak uh, about this petition, uh, please come forward. Okay. I see nobody rising. I'll move to close the public hearing. Second. Have a motion second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public hearing is closed. Uh, any discussion on this uh, preliminary plat from the board? I'll entertain a motion then. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to recommend that uh, petition PP-19-02-01 be forwarded to the Board of County Commissioners with a recommendation of approval, uh, including the three uh, conditions that were attached by staff. Okay? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, that goes forward to the BCC. Okay, on to petition number two. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sean Cullinan, planning zoning official. I have been sworn. I am going to be doing this presentation in place of Ken Quillen. He had a family emergency and could not attend today. So as such, I would ask respectfully to be entered as an expert in the field of planning and zoning. I have been the planning and zoning official for Charlotte County for the past eight years. Prior to that, I was a planner uh, for the city of Northport. I have processed and brought forward hundreds of rezonings, land use amendments, variances, whatever they might be uh, throughout my career. And I respectfully request being deemed an expert. The board so accepts. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, this petition, Z190202, is a small scale rezone, uh, approximately 30,000 square feet or just less than an acre for commercial tourists to commercial general. This property is located at the corner of Ackline Road and Tamiami Trail, as you can see in this. This is the buffer map for where the mail notifications uh, went out to. Site, closer view of the site. Uh, this started out as a code enforcement violation. Uh, Kuykendall Roofing, the applicant, had begun storing their equipment on this open area. Uh, their work vehicles, their staff were parking there. That's currently zoned CT. Contractor storage yards are not a CT allowed use. So they are going through the process as required in order to become legal. Property has a maturing neighborhood framework. Future land use designation of commercial and the zoning designation of CT. Again, here's a site. So with that, uh, staff will, is recommending approval of this petition. What it is doing is changing it from CT, commercial tourist, which is intended to be, uh, that designation is intended for more touristy areas, similar to West County. We have small pockets of it in other areas uh, that would allow for more uses, as well as allow for the special exception for a contractor storage yard with more than 10 vehicles. Currently under the code, you can have a building trade contractor office as a conditional use, and the conditions are that you can't have more than 10 vehicles and you can't have outside storage. If you can't meet those requirements, you can apply to the Board of Zoning Appeals for a variance. Uh, once, if this is approved, they will then take that next step to go before the Board of Zoning Appeals for, um, excuse me, not a variance, a special exception to allow for those uses. Uh, with that, staff's recommending approval, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions from the board? Well, I have one quick question. Mm -hmm. You said uh, they had a code enforcement issue. Correct. Uh, have they uh, resolved that temporarily? or These are the steps that need to be taken in order to do that. They've put up a uh, fencing. We don't shut people down um, when they have code enforcement violations until they exhaust all the available opportunities to them. So they are taking the proper steps in order to come into compliance. If not, if this petition isn't granted or if this is granted but the special exception is not, then they'll have to cease operations or do a use that is allowed under the CT zoning. Thank you. 
Uh, we'll listen to the uh, applicants. Representative. Good afternoon, Jerry Waxler with McCrory Law Firm, representing Kuykendall Roofing Inc. requesting a rezoning from commercial tourist to commercial general for the parcel located at the northwest corner of US 41, which is an arterial highway, and Acline Road, which is a rural major collector roadway. The site has had commercial land use since the inception of Charlotte County's comprehensive plan and has been zoned for commercial use for decades. The existing commercial tourist zoning permits banks, bars, cocktail lounges, pharmacies, which would include marijuana dispensaries, gas station, retail sales and services, liquor stores, and restaurants. These are all some of the highest impact commercial uses. The request to change to commercial general will not result in the potential for increased impacts to utilities or traffic. Any new development on the site will be required to comply with swift mud permitting requirements for stormwater management. The subject property is within the maturing neighborhood framework. This framework category places importance on protecting residential neighborhoods. The parcel itself is not in a residential neighborhood. The US 41 Acline intersection contains active railroad tracks in the northwest and southwest corners. The southeast corner houses the former cash and carry shopping plaza. And the southwest corner is a vacant industrial zone parcel. Industrial development then extends southward along US 41 from that vacant industrial parcel. To the north of the subject parcel, which you can see in this aerial, is a motel. Like most of US 41 in Charlotte County, the property does back up to residential. It's zoned commercial, but does back up to residential. The subject property is adjacent to one single family residence. You can see that on the uh, on the aerial that you have in front of you. This residence is also directly across a client from the former cash and carry shopping plaza that which is now home to Muscle Car City, uh, the Muscle Car City Museum and the, and the diner within there. The home has been impacted for years by a commercial general use. The proposed rezoning to CG of this adjacent property will essentially subject this home to the same impacts as the existing commercial tourist zoning. The home was purchased by its current owner in 2016, so they knew or should have known that they were purchasing adjacent to commercial property. Given the uses permitted in the CT zoning district and the existence of a shopping center across Acline Boulevard, any impacts to the living conditions or property values on this home have already occurred and will be unchanged by the proposed zoning amendment. The petitioner, Kaikendal Roofing, intends to continue to use the structure on the site for its offices. The office is and will remain the closest structure to the existing home. The change from CT to CG, as uh, Mr. Cullen indicated, will also allow it to park some of its vehicles on the site. No heavy equipment and no storage yard is permitted by right in the CG zoning district. And at this point, they have no intention of applying for a special exception to be able to, to uh, utilize those uses. Our application detailed consistency with the comprehensive plan. I've addressed the existing land use pattern, the impact on public facilities, and the impact on adjacent living conditions. The county's expert, Sean Cullinan, likewise addressed those considerations, found consistency with the comprehensive plan, and compliance with the zoning considerations. Kaikendal Roofing requests a recommendation of approval for this rezoning from CT to CG Commercial General. I'm available if you have any questions. Uh, you may have said it, but do you accept Mr. Uh, Cullen as an expert witness? I accept Mr. Cullen as an expert witness. Any questions uh, for Ms. Waxler? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. May. Uh, the violations, uh, I already I, I mentioned the fence. Do you know what the, were there other violations? It was, well, because they were using it as a contractor. In other words, the sure. set commercial general allows a contractor's office with parking of vehicles, and they had bought the property, and they are roofing contractor, and were using it in that manner. They were cited. They came to me, and we immediately began the process of rezoning this to allow for that use. Right. I'm just wondering, do you know what the individual um, violations were? Was it just a fence, or...? Uh, no, the violation was a prohibited use of the property, which would be the trucks, uh, uh, trailers, or a, a contractor's storage, uh, okay. or a contractor's building's office. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, how long has the contractor been uh, operating out of there? Over a year at this point, I think, or or they you know, believe roughly a about year. a year since they, they purchased the property. They knew it was commercial. They didn't realize the distinction between CT and CG. Is, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. is there a plan to cordon off the residential parcel or the, uh, the, the property that faces Acline Road? Is that going to be cordoned off from the rest of the parcel? Is there going to be a separation or is it all going to stay one contiguous? No, it will say one contiguous. It's not, that's, that's the building that they use as an office okay, building. It's been, it, it, it may have been at some point in time a, a single family residence, but it's been used as an office building, I think, even prior to okay. Kuykendall. Appraisal where I could show it as a residence. That's why I took on, asked the question. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. How long has the fence been up? 
fence has been put up as uh, uh, a, a few months now. A few months. It's it, it's it's part of what they're doing to try and, and, and to that's kind of buffers and to, in preparation for the transition. The, the automobiles parked along 41 are they are they associated with this business? They're they're outside the fence, but they're right on. They're all. I believe they would. I believe my understanding is that they are involved with that business. Um, one of the requirements would be that they'd have to park the vehicles within the fence on their property, not within the right of way. Okay. Right now, what they are doing is they're the work vehicles are over are in this area overnight. Then the employees come, take those work vehicles, leave their personal vehicles. Right. But the personal vehicles, are, the, are those vehicles parked along the right of way and forward? I believe so, yes. Any other questions from the board? Okay. Uh, we'll open up the public hearing for the, uh, anyone that wishes to speak for or against this petition, please come <coughs> forward. Uh, please sign in. Mr. Chairman, while this gentleman is signing in, I think I should disclose that I attended a meeting on March the 28th. Um, Mr. Toth was, was present. Uh, the, the subject came up. Uh, <clears throat> all, all we did was identify the location of the property. There was no discussion of any, any subjects about what was involved, okay. but I wanted to disclose it. Thank you. <clears throat> Public meeting. Thank you, Don. Um, I am Bob Toth. I'm president of Seminole Lakes POA about 720 residents the whole we received this letter it was maybe 12 days ago we certainly don't have time to do engineering studies and get our attorney involved i am aware of the law that when it comes before the commissioners we could present all that but i also am aware that the commissioners depend a lot on your recommendation what really bothers me is that the county wants to do this rezoning only to get them out of their violations. It, they've been in violations of the existing zoning for at least five months, maybe more. Uh, not only are they in violation of that, they've had many violations for roofing permits and it's in the county records. And I'm really surprised that you and others support this change just to get them out of the violations. What you really should be doing is making him conform to the zoning. So we will come forward with the commissioners with more documentation and that. Although this may not be legal, what the county is trying to do, it certainly is improper and it is not good governance. Thank you for listening. If I may, while the next person's coming up, um, the mailed advertisements <coughs> were delivered to the mailroom and sent out on, I believe it was March 17th. Uh, code requires 10 days for us to send it out. We have upped that to 15 per direction from the Board of County Commissioners, as well as last year increasing the buffer size for where those mailed notices go. So I just wanted to make sure you were well aware of that. Thank you. Good afternoon, Commissioners. I'm Ray Lockhart. I've got a health problem, and I asked earlier if this uh, chair could be brought up. If it's okay with you, I'll sit on the chair. I'll talk a little bit until my voice gives out. I've got a, a heart problem in addition to a pulmonary problem, so bear with me, please. Let me sign in here. Please. <clears throat> As I said, my name is Ray Lockhart, and my wife and I reside at 10173 Arrowhead Drive in the community of Seminole Lakes Country Club, and we've been full-time residents of Ponte Gorda, Charlotte County, for up to 22 years. Uh, we, along with 12 other homeowners within Seminole Lakes Country Club, received a letter from Charlotte County dated March 23rd, 2019, as we fall within the 500-foot buffer map. <clears throat> First and foremost, we are very opposed to the, giving this applicant the zoning change requested 
And I'll go over some of the following reasons as to why we want you planners, commissioners, to, to hear this. February 2015, Apkins purchased the one-story single-family resident that was built in 1969 and applied for a business license as CT. The property is zoned CT. It was part of a lot uh, division, and hence they bought, they bought the property with 36, 37 lots being combined to operate a professional service office and not a commercial roofing contractor with an outside storage yard on location. And I will add, that property had a back fence. And these, this roofing company has used that as an outside storage yard, bringing roofing materials inside and closing it back up again. Now we're only talking about the 9,000 square foot to single family home at this point. After purchasing the property on February 2015, improvements were made to the property, a new roof, general cleanup, etc. However, by late fall of 2016, cars and pickup trucks were parking on the front lawn, along with open trailers loaded with roofing materials, etc. And again, some of these were being parked behind the fence in an open area. When construction material was openly displayed on the front lawn, March 2017 timeframe, Charter County zoning officer was called and visited the site and things improved. The site was cleaned up on the front. The applicant at that time was using the private parking lot south of, on, of Acoline Road, which is Muscle Car City as we know it today, and was told they had to move all their vehicles off the property by the owner. As such, upward of eight to 10 heavily wrapped condo roofing trucks lined up across the front of Applicant's 3,000 Acoline property. Their five-ton dump truck, trailers and employees' cars were scattered across the vacant, adjoining vacant lot facing US 41. Now this was, as I said, uh, in late 2017. <clears throat> Charlotte County Zoning was again involved and told them they were clearly op operating outside of commercial CT zoning parameters as they did back in 2016 and that they could not park on the vacant next door property but could park in the swell areas on and off their property. The zone zoning officer at that time was informed of their pending purchase of the vacant lot facing US 41 and plans to install fencing for their on-premise storage yard. February 23rd, 2018, Kendall Roofing purchased the land, vacant land, next door facing US 41, and combined that with their home property, is what you see today. The combined footprint went from 9,100 square feet to approximately 33,895 square feet zone commercial tourist CT. And subsequently, shortly thereafter, they put up fencing to operate their on-premise storage yard. Clearly, they were and still are operating outside of CT zoning. The question is, why have they been allowed to continue operating outside of Charlotte County zoning parameters with no punitive action being taken to bring them into compliance? This has been going on since 2016 when zoning got involved. <clears throat> and it was very obvious at that time that there was an open storage going on in the backyard, but nothing seemed to change. <clears throat> so now here we are, we're asking, they're asking for a zoning change to CG from CT. However, even if ultimately approved by the commissioners, and you recommend it, they would not be permitted to operate an on-premise storage yard, as they are currently and ha as they currently have been operating, unless they put up a storage building and store everything inside and out of sight. To operate an open outside storage yard on premise, a special exception, as a separate application would have to be approved by the commissioners, by your board and the commissioners, and would allow more than ten vehicles to be on site, and they have stated in their agenda, that is their intent. 
I'm going to have to ask you to wrap up your presentation. Uh, I'm going to try and pick it up again I'm from a voice side. It's very. Uh, you have a five minute limitation, and you've. How much time do I have left, sir? Uh, you've exceeded it, so please. You've exceeded it, so please wrap it up. Would you want me to have somebody else read the rest of this? It's uh, your choice, but you have five minutes, and you've exceeded it. May I proceed? Uh, what is the board's wish? I don't have any objections. I don't have any objections. Okay. Thank you, sirs. I appreciate it very much. The city of Ponte Gorda Utilities will only be providing portable water service to this location as sanitary source systems are not available on this property. According to Ponte Gorda Utilities, they have no plans for a sewer for connection to that area. Consequently, they are asking you for approval today to use an existing septic system installed in 1969 over 50 years ago to be used for a future commercial general application. Rezoning narrative, in the agenda it says about next door, the shopping center is now zoned HC, Highway Commercial, perfectly fine. To suggest in that agenda that Charter County CG is the same as Ponte Gorda zoning is incorrect. Ponte Gorda, if you look at chapter 26, 3.10, it'll tell you what is permitted under their zoning. 3.11 will tell you the fact that roofing contractors got to be in a special district, not in a residential section. Currently, the build out within Appalachia Manor subdivision is approximately 93% consisting of single family homes and a mobile home park to the west end, west and north of it. <coughs> that whole area back there is single family. And it's all zoned single family residence, not CT. In total, there's approximately 183 lots with 172 built out. Of this number, there are a total of four to five properties on US 41 that are zoned CT because they're facing 41. And one of the ones is the one we're discussing. The motel to the north, Sunoco Station, and one or two undeveloped lots clearly are still available. And this is a residential area. On the other side of Acoline Road, you have where I live, Seminole Lakes Country Club. We have approximately 454 homes totally built out with single family residents. You heard the president of the POA talk about the number of residents we have in there, 700 and some people residing in there. So they're asking for you to approve putting this little slice, opening up commercial general in an area that is almost 100% residential from Burnt Store 41 corner down. <clears throat> in essence, we respectfully ask the Planning and Zoning Board to deny this request. As the applicant has proved over and over the fact they have little concern with Charter County zoning requirements or the residents of Ponte Gorda or the community in general. Thank you for the additional time, gentlemen. Any questions? I've got one. Can you hold it? Yep. Thank you. Next, please. Next speaker, please. What's that? Next speaker, please. Yes. Anyone else wishing to address this petition? <coughs> I'll move to close the public hearing. Second. I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public hearing is closed. Uh, Mr. Chandler, you had a question. You can ask the applicant or the staff. Uh, the applicant. Uh, no, he's talking to the applicant. Public hearing is closed. <laughs> Go ahead. The, my question here is, and that time frame that was brought up, how many other people are against this? How many other people are the against The neighbors are. You 
you heard from the the two that came up to speak so evidently it's right. the, so the neighbors the are not two. here seminal seminal lakes has come but, up to uh, right they're the only two that's against this uh, situation is that correct the two you heard from would be i mean i we heard from two one one is the president of, of i the think board. The, of the board so representing seminal seminal lakes so there are a lot more than two residents in seminal lakes well the reason being you know i see what's happening there i and I would think that the people in that area, where there's a problem like this, there would have been more people interested, interested in getting it resolved and, and going by the recommendation of uh, code enforcement or whatever. And, with, uh, and I know that these people here are upset about what they've expressed, but I think there should have been more input in here from uh, that group to have a, more of a, a compelling, compassionate, scenario so they, may, they may be looking to see what transpires here so they can prepare f more fully for the uh, board of county commissioners meeting if i may provide some Please. rebuttal yeah. to, to what Please. you heard um it's very important um saying this more for the people in the audience than than for the board that understand what can be considered in a rezoning. We don't consider whether we like or don't like the applicant. We don't consider whether we do or do not like the applicant's behaviors in the past, although I'm not conceding that they have been poor neighbors, but just that we like. We look at four criteria. The first is whether it is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Comprehensive plan is and has always been for this area commercial. Both commercial tourists, which is it's existing, is consistent but as is the commercial general zoning. Both are consistent with the comprehensive plan. That was contained in the staff report. You heard that from the county's expert, Sean Cullinan. When you look at consistency with the comprehensive plan, you don't only look at consistency with the, uh, the land use. You also look at things like the um, capacity. So when we get into that in a moment. That's another criteria. The second criteria is the existing land use pattern in the adjacent areas. And we concede that it is adjacent to residential, but it already has commercial zoning adjacent to residential. I read you the list. There seems to be a belief that somehow commercial tourists, if this was developed with commercial tourists, that would be less offensive, would create less traffic, would create less impact. But commercial tourists allows for a large number of uses that will actually generate as much as and more than what the use we plan to will generate more than the use that will, that it, the site is planned to be put to but you can't consider the specific use we're simply looking at the commercial general zoning district as a whole both of those uses both commercial general and commercial tourist allow for things like retail shopping centers they allow for retail stores they allow for banks they allow for fast food restaurants with drive throughs all of those would create a greater demand um, on on utilities and on transportation, but it creates the same demand as the existing CT. That was contained in my application. We looked at and we prepared that in the same way that we always do. You look at the most intense use that a property could have. We used a shopping center, which is the most intense, tends to be the most intense use, the most retail, generates the most traffic. You can do that use under CT. So the analysis was that same potential for traffic exists under CT as exists under CG same amount of usage of water and sewer services exists under CT as exists under CG. If the site puts up new buildings, it will have to comply with swift mud requirements and therefore will put in necessary stormwater, that sort of thing. And there is no impact, obviously, on, on schools. You also must look at, I just lost my place, as I just stated, the existing, oh, in talking about the existing land use, this is a major intersection on US 41. You have US 41, the property is located on US 41. Our most intense commercial uses are intended to go on US 41. Um, it has a shopping center adjacent to it uh, that is now being used with Muscle Car City, which also has a diner and a restaurant. I drove by there, went to La Fiantrina for breakfast on Sunday, and there were a number of cars at 9.30 in the morning in Muscle Car City going to breakfast at the diner. So it has uses seven days a week. Um, already exists in this site. You can see that the other corner is high intensity industrial. 
This is not a tourist area. You heard that from Sean Cullinan. It gave, received that CT zoning because you had the motel, the existing motel that's been there forever. When we did, just a little quick history lesson, when we did our initial comprehensive plan after fighting tooth and nail uh, against the state to even have to implement one, we simply looked at what was already on the ground and for all intents and purposes placed that designation on. So you already had commercial at this corner. It got a commercial land use. You had an existing hotel. It got CT zoning. That's how we did things back when this originally got this land use and this zoning. That doesn't mean that this has evolved to be a tourist area. Quite the opposite. It is not. When you look at the corner, you do have residences on the other side, but you have industrial, you have commercial, and you have a proposal for commercial. The third criteria is the existing capacity of public facilities. I already spoke to that. And the fourth is whether the proposed change will adversely influence living conditions on property or property values in the adjacent areas. You can't just look at the use that we're proposing, but the overall commercial general zoning district. Commercial general zoning district has requirements for buffers. It has height requirements. It has any use that could go on that property now, we talked about, would have to, those, those same criteria. The key point being that there is so little difference between commercial tourist and commercial general in terms of the uses that create the most impact, the most traffic, the most demand on utilities, that you're not going to have any significant impact on the adjacent property that you haven't already have or would have under CT. Um, and because that property has been across the street adjacent to commercial and across the street from existing commercial for such a long time, any impacts to its property values have already occurred. Those are the only four things that you can look at. You can't look at whether or not we like the person who is making the application, whether the person who is making the application, in fact, to say that they shouldn't get it because they're in violation and now they're simply trying to correct the violation by changing the zoning, is the antithesis of what you're supposed to do when you are cited for a zoning violation. They got a violation. They came to me. We worked with the county to discuss what had to happen to correct the violation. The first step in that process is to get the correct zoning on the property, and that is what they are doing. They are in good faith working to resolve the violation. It is important as you move forward that you keep in mind what your criteria are and not whether or not you like or dislike the applicant or have concerns about whether the applicant will clean up the property. It's already in the process of doing that. It has done that. It's fenced the property. It is still has its trucks there because as Mr. Cullinan indicated, as it is moving to resolve the violation, it is allowed to continue to operate the business. I'm available if you have any questions. Any questions from the board? To Ms. Wexler. I, I would have a question of counsel. Um, we're being asked to change something. Um, is it incumbent upon us to um, give all the reasons why we don't want to change something? No, sir. You make the decision based on the testimony and evidence presented <clears throat> here today. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Any other questions? Uh, for staff. Any discussion? Yes, I, um, I have one question. Um, as it's come up, uh, one of the reasons I asked what the uh, violations were was to find out if that the zoning change would uh, be the placebo for all those and, and would that uh, cure those, those issues. Um, the second th question would be, um, you know, to staff, uh, would you have granted the same zoning change had this not occurred? I mean, if someone came to you and didn't have these issues, uh, would it still be um, granted? Yes, we still would. Excuse me, I apologize. Sean Cullen, planning zoning official. Yes, we still would have evaluated it the same way we evaluate any application for a uh, zone re uh, for a zoning amendment. What we look at is, is this the proper place? Again, the future land use is commercial. Even though the city has different designations, um, I believe their commercial highway allows, and I may be wrong, but given the fact that there was a previous uh, grocery store there, that I think you could even put like a Walmart out there. Uh, this is our commercial, would also allow that, obviously wouldn't fit on 0.35 acres, but we would evaluate it the same way. Um, the zoning violations, this is how they're coming in compliance. Code enforcement is not intended to be punitive. It's intended to address violations. There are still steps they need to go to. I know Ms. Waxler just stated uh, earlier that they would not be going for a special exception. Um, that would limit them to the limits that are in place under the conditional 
allowances, they would still have to properly buffer. Fence is one portion of a buffer requirement. You also have landscaping requirements, and they would have to do anything else. Um, commercial, you are not required to have sanitary sewer. You're, you have to have some form of it, but you're not required to have centralized sanitary sewer. It can be done on septic. Most people don't because it takes up a uh, very significant land area for the leach field, uh, but that's handled through the health department, but there is no requirement that a commercial uh, development has to be on central sewer. It just has to have sewer facilities. Uh, we would evaluate the same way, and that's why we checked it. it ticked all the boxes and we had no competent substantial evidence to recommend denial of it. Okay, thank you. That's that was uh, my question there. And I'm sorry I said uh, placebo. I think I meant to say panacea. Thank you. Any other discussion? Um, this being a petition that has come before us, it's uh, well I think should be looked at as a straight zoning issue. The violations they're having is a code enforcement issue, which is not our purview, uh, but it is a zoning uh, determination. And being that the future land use map has this as commercial uh, to migrate from commercial tourists to commercial general is, uh, is appropriate along a U.S. major highway. Uh, we have residential uh, right next to commercial general commercial intensive all the way up and down us 41 uh, in fact in port charlotte we have an overlay district that allows the commercial to extend one lot back from the commercial lot on 41 to the residential street behind it not to have access to the residential street but to uh, go back one lot uh, so this is an issue within Charlotte County as to the commercial not being deep enough for a lot of development. Uh, looking at this strictly as a zoning uh, change, uh, I feel that it uh, meets the uh, future land use uh, criteria and being on a major highway, it would also meet uh, a zoning category to change from CT to CG. Uh, if anybody else has any comments. Well, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. McCormick. Um, I'm not of a mind to, to uh, make a motion on this. Okay. Thank you. I'll make a motion. Uh, I would like to motion. Uh, to make a motion that application Z19-02-02 be forwarded to the Board of County Commissions with a recommendation of approval based on the findings and analysis in the staff report dated April 1st, 2019, Charlotte County's comprehensive plan and the evidence and testimony presented at the public hearing before the Planning and Zoning Board this date. Okay. I make a second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. Uh, please pull the board. Aye. Ken Chandler. Aye. Paul Bigness. Aye. Stephen Vieira. Aye. Don McCormick. Nay. Michael Graveson. Aye. Thank you. That goes forward four to one to the board of county commissioners. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda, please. Good afternoon, for the record, Jay Shaw, Community Development Department. My planning expert qualification is attached to the staff report as Exhibit 1. WBF Florida Properties 3 LLC is requesting a major modification of an existing plan development PD. 
The petition number is Z190304. The stated purpose of this petition is to revise condition I of PD ordinance number 2014-007 to modify the location and specification of the signage in order to look for future development options for the subject property. The notification of public hearings for this petition was sent to the property owners and adjacent property owners within 500 feet of the proposed subject site as shown. <coughs> the subject property is located northeast of US 41, south of Haysboro Boulevard, southeast of Cranberry Boulevard, and west of Bamboo Drive in the Port Charlotte area. The site contains approximately 77 acres. The site currently contains the Kia dealership and drainage systems, and the rest of the site is vacant. <coughs> and the site is part of economic corridor on the 2050 framework map, and this is 2030 future land use map. The site is designated as commercial. The site is currently zoned PD. On the screen is a proposed revision to the PD condition I, which is to add Exhibit A, location of three monument signs, and Exhibit B, specification of such signs, for example, style and size. It is staff's professional opinion that this request is not contrary to any goals, objectives, and policy set forth in the county's comprehensive plan will not increase or decrease the approved development rights and will not create any detrimental impact, such as visual, on the surrounding properties. Therefore, the department is recommending approval of this major modification to revised PD condition I. <coughs> I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions for the staff? We'll have the presentation from the applicant's representative. Good afternoon, Rob Bernson, Big W Law Firm, here on behalf of the applicant. It seems just a couple years ago we were standing in front of you all on the original uh, approval of the Kia dealership and the excitement around all of that. And I think it's come to fruition and uh, probably exceeded many of our expectations. The amount of sales that go through that uh, dealership is tremendous for the county from sales tax perspective sales tax perspective. This is a really minor change. This is basically just um, adding some signage um, so that if and when the balance of the property is developed that the signage is already in place uh, for that to be developed. All the other conditions remain the same and uh, we join <coughs> the staff report and the presentation Ms. Xiao made. We accept her as a witness, uh, expert witness and we're happy to answer any questions, but I think this one's pretty cut and dry. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from the, the board? No. Okay. We'll open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak uh, about this petition, please come forward. Okay. Move to close the public hearing. Second. Have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public hearing is closed. Uh, any any questions from the board or any comments? Any discussion? I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chandler. Thank you. I see on March 22nd of 2019, the Community Development Department approved this this area that we're talking about, and it, with the approval from the Planning and Zoning Board on this date of April 8, 2019. The Planning and Zoning Board moves to forward Z19-03-04 to the Board of County Commissioners with a recommendation for their approval. Thank you. I have a motion? Second. And a second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Uh, motion moves forward to the BCC. Last item on the agenda, please. Good afternoon. Again, for the record, Jay Shaw, Community Development Department. 
Again, my planning expert qualification is attached to this staff report as exhibit one. And accepted by the board. The applicant TNT Southern Holdings LLC is requesting a rezoning and the petition number is Z181040. The stated purpose of this rezoning from Industrial General IG to Plan Development PD is to allow for a concrete batch plan, precast production and storage, and all other permitted uses under the IG zoning district on the subject property. The notification of public hearings for this petition was sent to the property owners and adjacent property owners within 500 feet of the proposed site, as shown you can see on the screen. The subject property is located on Aklan Road in the Ponta Gorda area. The site contains approximately 13.38 acres. The subject property is part of the economic center on the 2050 framework map. The property has been designated as high, indens high intensity industrial on the 2030 future land use map. The proposed concrete batch plan and precast production and storage, as well as all other permitted uses under the IG zoning district are permitted under the existing high intensity industrial future land use map category. However, the site is currently zoned industrial general IG, which only allows for uses permitted under the low intensity industrial flume category and does not allow for the proposed concrete batch plan. To the north of the property, across Ackland Road, there are single family homes and some vacant residential platinum lots and parcels. Therefore, in order to minimize any potential detrimental impacts on the adjacent residential uses, the property owner is applying for this PD rezoning. On the screen is a proposed PD concept plan. The proposed PD rezoning will allow the county to place adequate conditions which will help to buffer residents to the north from any potential heavy industrial uses and will minimize any negative impact such as visual, noise, fume, or dust. The proposed PD condition E, dust abatement plan, F, spill prevention and control plan, condition G, low level and silent reverse signal alarm or similar device, and condition H, hours of operation and condition I or outdoor lighting requirements will specifically minimize any negative impact such as noise, fume, and dust. The proposed PD condition O requires the applicant to restore and preserve the existing on-site wetland. The proposed condition P requires applicant to place an enhanced type D buffer within a minimum width of 50 feet along the northern property line to minimize any detrimental impacts on the existing residential neighborhood, such as five feet tall berm, four feet tall shrubs, eight feet tall accent trees, and 16 feet tall canopy trees at the time of planting. The proposed PD condition C height requirement will minimize the visual impact. You can see on the screen, they will tell you, you can see this is cross street have residential there, and you can see the elevation for the trees, shrubs, and the proposed heights for the different location for the subject site. Furthermore, the site has convenient access to US 41 and nearby I-75, and already have some heavy industrial uses to the west and south. Staff has determined that the proposed rezoning is compatible with the current room classification of high intensity industrial on the site, and it is also compatible with the room classification and zoning designations immediate to the west, east, and south of the subject site. Therefore, it is staff's professional opinion that the proposed rezoning is consistent with the room classification on the site and appropriate to this location. Therefore, the department is recommending approval of this PD rezoning with conditions A through R, 
and I believe the applicant agrees with all conditions, so I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the board for, for staff? Okay. We'll have the applicant's presentation. Good afternoon again. Rob Bernson, Big W Law Firm, here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, we recognize Ms. Xiao's expert qualifications um, and her, we join in her staff report and her testimony that she's presented. Um, my client purchased this property and it had the high intensity industrial land use on it. One option for us would have been to come in for a straight uh, II industrial intensive zoning. Um, which would have been consistent with the comprehensive plan. However, <clears throat> recognizing the uh, residential area to the north, we've proposed a plan development so that we could ensure, <clears throat> excuse me, enhanced landscaping and, buffer landscaping and buffering uh, to the site. There is a wetland that uh, comes through the western part of the property just east of the road that serves the property. Uh, that wetland will be enhanced and there is an enhanced buffer on the east side of that uh, 50 foot buffer as opposed to a 25 foot buffer along the front <clears throat> if we were to come in under existing zoning and the things that are allowed such as heavy equipment sales we would have some minimal landscaping in the front and you could have all of that heavy equipment right up by the roadway there would be no required setback here we are going in addition to the 25 foot that if pd requires we've added an additional 25 foot so that there's a 50 foot buffer in which the enhanced landscape on a berm uh, will be placed the concrete batch plant is to the south part of the property, further away uh, from the resi residential area. And the uh, precast storage area is basically where they make seawall panels and they just store them out there in the front until they're ready to be moved. Um, the staff report is extensive and goes through the requirements for a rezoning and we support those findings. And just to re reiterate them, uh, the proposed change is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Again, as indicated, it is a high intensity industrial land use uh, for the property. The existing land use pattern shows that there is other in industrial development uh, within this area. Um, there is residential to the north, but again, with the buffers that the PD provides, um, that should be uh, sufficient to uh, buffer the property as you saw from the site view um, if you were standing typically on the front porch of a house across the street with the landscaping that's in front, your view is, is blocked. Uh, we will be served by water and sewer by the city of Punta Gorda. While we're just down the road from the previous petition you have, there is water and sewer further to the east that we can um, bring to our property. So there will be water and sewer. However, the concrete uh, mixing operations would utilize a well so as to not utilize potable water for those needs. Um, the proposal will not adversely influence living conditions or property values. As indicated, it's already high intensity uh, industrial land use with an industrial general zoning on the property. Many, many activities can take place under the existing code that are as intense or more intense than what is being proposed without the additional buffers. And the proposed change will not have any effect on public safety. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I think it's important um, the level of detail that the staff report went into, as well as the conditions of the plan development, because this was not something we just threw together. We discussed the conditions to ensure that we could be a good neighbor um, in this vicinity. And uh, I commend staff for the work that they put into this, and we respectfully request your recommendation of approval for this change. I'd be happy to answer any questions. And you didn't firm, but you accept conditions A through R? Yes, we do, and I was sworn in. <laughs> any, qu uh, any questions for Mr. Bernson? Mr. Chairman, I yes. have uh, one there. Uh, there was a mention, I think, of uh, dust. A facility of that sometimes does tend to generate some dust, especially when the wind's blowing. Um, have they uh, systems? I'll have Gary uh, Bain, the engineer there. on the project, address. I think you have some residential right across the street. Sure. For the record, Gary Bain with Southwest Engineering. And I have been sworn. Uh, 
Um, the site hasn't been designed yet, but the as normal concrete batch plants, uh, there's uh, usually sprinkle heads with spigots uh, spraying down constantly uh, about two hours a day per day. And that's one of the reasons we will be utilizing probably uh, like a three inch well to have that done and not use the city of Punta Gorda potable drinking supply. Usually it's for their aggregates and stuff. Correct. Though, but I mean, the, the paths where the forklifts and so forth are running the trucks that are coming in and out. Yeah, you, are you talking about the Hall Road and stuff coming in and uh, out? Mainly within the plant area there. Uh, the, the aggregates tend to get pulverized over time. Correct. And uh, are, are a lot easier uh, airborne and just. Uh, yeah. You know, that, that comes down to more of a operations with, with uh, and again, we haven't designed the site, but, uh, I, you know, I just, we've done a few in the past, um, and dust can, but I, I'm, I'm feeling that the, with the, the landscape buffer, the wetland on the one side, that's enough protection to uh, capture any dust that would go. I think you got some berming you're planning on doing? Correct. It was a five-foot berm that, that we're planning as well. Okay, thank you. Don't go away. Question. <laughs> As I look at the site plan here, is there any building currently constructed on that site? No, it's vacant. It's all vacant land. Thank you. And just for the record, we also have the landscape architect and the environmental consultant on the project present, if there's any questions for them. <clears throat> my answer to his problem, on the, on the big projects I had where I had my own batch plants, multi-concrete trucks, aggregate coming in and everything else, you can get with the uh, rain burrs and the sprinklers and all that. We found that the best solution for this is to use a tanker truck and have it go by periodically. When it starts, you can see when it's getting dry, stuff starts to rise. And so they, they go back there. The only problem you might have is where you're going to get your water from. They don't want to see you pumping it out of the canal. Probably if you have a hydrant there, they're going to make you put a meter on it, of course. But that is that we had the best success by doing that. And we also kept the residents of that area where but far enough away, in my estimation, we'd never had any problems with it, with excess dust or any any debris factor that would irritate them or their families. So that's a, a give that consideration. You're talking. I know how much you're looking to make on this thing, but I'm, on your output productivity. But I can tell you, if it was mine, I'd have myself a a, a, a tanker truck with power a jet nozzles in the front, out the side, and at the back. All right. And I'm not going to charge you one cent for giving me that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pass it on. Thank you. All right. Any other questions from the board? Okay. Then we'll open up the public hearing. Anybody wishing to speak concerning this uh, petition, please come forward. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Benji Dees, uh, resident of the area next to Ackline, uh, just down from the site. I applaud the applicant for what they're doing. We bought our property and lived in the area for over 20 years. Uh, I understand exactly what it was there when we bought the property and I understand exactly what's going across the street from us. I spoke on the phone and I applaud her for her efforts in getting the buffer. My only concern is the truck traffic. We currently already have two plants back there now that come on to Ackline. We're gonna add a third one now into a residential area it has school bus stops adjacent to that. They can easily go out the other side and come onto Taylor Road, which is a commercial traffic, go north or south as they need to. I know it's only addressing one plant, but that's our biggest concern is the truck traffic that comes onto Ackline, which is a residential road, when they can easily go out the other side and go on to a commercial road, Taylor Road, and go north or south, wherever they need to go, access the, their time in the same manner and protect the residential area that's directly across the street, the school bus stop that's directly across the street from where those trucks come out. And that's my only concern. I applaud them on the buffer. We already put up with the noise. We already put up with the clanging. We already put up with the dust from the other two. And I know they can do it without doing anything they're doing. And I applaud them for that. That's my only concern and that's my only request. Thank you. Anyone else but wishing to speak about this petition? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to close the public hearing. I have a question. Just a second. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Public hearing is closed. Yes, your question. And that gentleman's uh, talking about the traffic and since they got another area of uh, transportation. Has the city, any city uh, engineer been asked to go out and look it over and see any recommendations they came up with with the fact that you're going to have more transportation in an area, apparently, where there's like school buses, kids on those roads and things like that. That's a, that's a tough one. And it can cause a lot of problems if it's not if it's overlooked, and and just seeing the right people involved should handle that problem into a way of, this, of the local satisfaction. That's the neighbors. Uh, I don't know. I want to call it rebuttal, but <laughs> in response, let's say um, we appreciate his comments. A uh, couple of things. Number one. Ackline Road is a rural major collector road, so it is already, whether we're there or not, it is a collector road with a number of um, large vehicles coming and going. The county traffic engineer did review this application and regardless of the traffic counts, which we didn't trigger, he has required that we have a left-hand turn lane um, coming from the east uh, uh, as part of the projects, one of the conditions. Uh, we don't warrant that, but as a further safety issue so that traffic isn't backed up along Ackline Road, uh, that was a requirement that he put in and we accepted that condition. The reality is the vast majority of the traffic, it, some of it may go south to Taylor Road. It's really a matter of where they're ultimately going, but the majority of it is going to head out to 41, which is uh, just a few hundred feet to the west of the entrance. We did not request or propose an access directly on to Ackline uh, in the vicinity of the residential that's across from us. We are utilizing the existing roadway which is on our property um, so that not to create another access point uh, on Ackline. And that would curtail the amount of trucks that would have to go further down Ackline to get in um, and the traffic coming out in and out of our property. But with that, um, I believe we've met the criteria for the granting of a rezoning, and we respectfully request your recommendation of approval to the Board of County Commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any other questions now from the Board or any discussion? Mr. Chairman, I'm ready to make a motion. Go ahead. Um, a motion to forward application Z190202 to the Board of County Commissioners with a recommendation of approval based on the finding and analysis in the staff report dated April 1, 2019. Charlotte's County Comprehensive Plan, plan and the evidence and testimony presented at the public hearing before the Planning and Zoning Board this date of April 8. In addition, there will be conditions A through R uh, as, as part of these findings and they are, are part of the motion to uh, move, move those conditions forward as well. I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Um, I think I want to make a correction. I th sure. thought I heard an incorrect petition number. Okay. Let's make sure we got it right. The petition is not application Z190202. Um, I have, I'm looking at Z181040. Oh, I'll be darned. Okay. Then. Uh, staff? I'm, I'm, or yep. Confirmation? I'm reading from your staff report, but, but we, will, we will amend it and make it correct. Thank you for catching it. <laughs> 181040. That was the previous petition. That was yeah. Yeah. This one is 181040. Right. right. I, I took this out of, out of the. Uh, Okay. Uh, from I took it off the computer today. I apologize. We'll double check that. Sorry about well, that. Well, no, I think it's. I think it's is. I think the chairman's correct. I think the, the application is Z, eighteen dash ten dash forty. And I stand corrected. I have correct. a motion and a second with correction to the petition number. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So that goes forward uh, to the BCC with a recommendation for approval and. The, the conditions. Thank you very much. Uh, any other business from the staff? Then that completes our agenda, so we're adjourned. My fault.